Hey, but it's just me. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Scotty Allen Day. I got my famous notes today. Ever wonder what makes a song legendary? How hard is it to write a chart topping anthem? And why is it normally a number one song called an anthem? And how does a song become popular? So that is my opinion topic for today. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about, uh, you know, what makes a song legendary, what makes it an anthem. And, you know, is the number one song actually called the performance anthem? Now, we're going to talk about anthems first, and then we're going to go down to what's cost, what makes a song legendary, and pretty much how a song becomes widely known. Now, number one, what we're going to talk about is an anthem. Is Normally, what people would call with an anthem would be, let's say, uh, it's their first number one. It's what a lot of people have in their mind. Now, we're going to take a couple of examples, and it just depends on the person. Uh, it could depend on the writer. It could depend on the on the uh, on the public. It could depend on the fan of what that particular person's anthem is. So let's say, for example, you have Michael Jackson. You have uh, let's say his four top would be. Uh, Billy Jean, Beat It, uh, Thriller, and Bad. I think Bad is number four. According to the billboards of what his most popular, most published songs are. Now, out of those four, I would say at least, out of, if, you, if you interviewed 20 people, I would say at least three out of those 20 people would say Smooth Criminal is Michael Jackson's anthem. I would say probably about five of those would say Thriller is Michael Jackson's anthem. And the rest goes to Bad and the rest goes to Billy Jean. It depends on mostly with the person. But I would personally, in my opinion, would say Thriller is Michael Jackson's true anthem. That is what everybody knows Michael Jackson for. But most people would know Michael Jackson for. Because if you had walked over to somebody that's uh, in a nursing home and say, hey, what song was Michael Jackson's greatest? They would say Thriller. You're not going to an elementary school and say, what was Michael Jackson's greatest hit? And they would, say, they would probably say Thriller. It's widely known. People use it around Christmas time. They use it around Thanksgiving. They use it at weddings. They use it at dances. And it's, it's known. And it, and it bounces up and down. Uh, if you ask about uh, Dolly Parton, just instantly everybody would say it would be Jolene. But she's had all kinds of chart busters as well. Her anthem, I would say, in my opinion, would be I Will Always Love You. That is Dolly Parton's anthem. Even though Whitney Houston made it number one, it is Dolly Parton's song, and it is pretty much her number one. I would say that that is her anthem that describes Dolly Parton. And Dolly Parton also said that that is her favorite song, which is a tribute to Porter Wagner that helped her get into country music. So a lot of times a tribute song that means a lot to, this, to that particular performer would also become their anthem. Let's take a look at a couple others and then we'll move on. So let's start off with, uh, let's say, Twisted Sister. Now, a lot of people know of two songs when it comes to Twisted Sister, and it is uh, I Wanna Rock, and of course, uh, We're Not Gonna Take It. Everybody would say, We're Not Gonna Take It. Dee Snyder would probably say that their anthem is, We're Not Gonna Take It. You look at ACDC, it might, it's gonna bounce between Hell's Bells and, uh, T and TNT. TNT is used to just about every sports game out there. It's just a great fight song. Uh, Hell's Bells, because everybody likes the song of Hell's Bells. They have lots of other chart-topping hits, but I believe those two are the most widely known. And, well, ACDC pretty much embraces TNT with the entire band. If you look at Queen, everybody would, and a lot of people would say, it would either be We Will Rock You 
or a Bohemian Rhapsody, but we all know that. And then the third one will be We Are the Champions, but I, we all know that We Will Rock You is definitely Queen's anthem. In my opinion, everybody else's opinion is different. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, another one would be uh, uh, Guns N' Roses, which would be Sweet Child of Mine, and then uh, Jamie's got a Jamie's got a pew pew. I can't say the other word online because well, that's what uh, you know. You have uh, then you go back into country music with Garth Brooks with Friends in No Places, and uh, Colin Baton Rouge and Rodeo, and of course Garth Brooks's true anthem is well, Friends in No Places. So you, I could go all day long talking about different types of anthems that uh, musicians that have, and that's a great idea that I could be able to do for a for a video. But I'm going to have to go through and make a nice long list of you know matching anthems with performers and like maybe my top 20 or top 25. If you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comment section below. That would probably be a really good music. Worthy video, and I think I'm going to work on that this afternoon. If if I get a strong response on it, I'll go ahead. Just don't even have to leave a comment. Just drop a like, and I'm going to turn around and do that. So, <clears throat> we're done with the anthems. Basically, what I would say would be their, a band's anthem is their, probably their most popular song, or it could lay, lie within like the top five of their greatest songs. Of all times. Uh, so not necessarily a number one is called an anthem. It's a number one according to the person that's thinking about what could be their anthem. And uh, ever wonder what makes a what makes a song legendary? Well, a song would achieve a legendary status as long as it keeps going in the music business. If it's a Song. Let's say I would name one one song that's actually a uh, an anthem would be Chuck Berry's Johnny Boo Good. That is Chuck Berry's anthem. Everybody knows it. Every knows everybody knows that it's he's famous for his duck walk with the uh, with jo with Johnny Boo Good. He is a pioneer. He is the uh, so he is the godfather of rock and roll, and. Well, there's going to be another uh, video that I'm going to be doing a little bit on Chuck Berry and a couple other people that are basically the founders of rock and roll that I'm not quite done with the research on and it's not quite the right time to be able to do that video. Now, so you have Chuck Berry and Johnny Bogood and until and, and still today when he published that video, when he published that uh a single, it is still goes on the charts, goes off the charts, goes on the charts, goes off the charts, and you still hear hear him playing everywhere. It's just like Jerry Lee Lewis's "Great Balls of Fire." You basically hear it everywhere, and it goes on the charts, off the charts, on the charts, off the charts. Now, what makes the uh, what makes a song become popular? There's about four four categories that I would say that brings popularity to a song and I would say the first one would probably be what kind of a mood does it give you what kind of a feeling does it give to, to somebody is it a song that has a hundred meanings and to each and every different person would it be sorrow would it be sadness or would it be remembrance? So if it's a slow song, would it mean any of those? It could also mean love. So you have you have a constant circle there. So it means something to everybody in a different way, and that brings more people to go and go in and grasp the song. If you uh, let's say Miley Cyrus's "Party in the USA," now. If it is a good party song and the lyrics are strong and they're easy to remember, 
the meat's not so good, you can still have a a sharp busting song. You have one hit wonders like Don McLean, American Pie. It's about I mean it Everybody is still trying to decipher the song, even though Don McLean has deciphered it a hundred times for everybody, but still everybody comes up with their own with their own meanings. And because Don McLean made such a wonderful song, it's still a legendary song because everybody's trying to decipher it. It's a fun song to listen to, and it's a, it it's such a good song that it's just sung at campfires and bonfires. So basically, mood and feeling is extraordinary. You have Gretchen Wilson's uh, "We're Here for the Party." Again, it's another party song. You have uh, "Kickstart Your Heart" from from Motley Crue. It's another party song. It's a fast beat, fast tempo party song that you could just go and rock out with. Just so mood and feeling. The next one will be about a beat. That's why hip hop is such a, so popular now. Uh, a lot of people with, uh, that are involved with DJs, electronic and techno music, are all there because of the beat. You know, boom, 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 and it just and it sets the mood and it makes you want to be able to dance. And it's and it's so well put together because of the beat that even if somebody that can't dance can pretend to dance just by following the beat. So again, that brings that song up into popularity. Another one would be uh, lyrics. Now again, like I said, with American Pie had a statement. The lyrics with, we're here for the party. It's about party, a party song. Uh, other songs like uh, the, the Beach Boys and the Beatles, uh, Endless Summer. <clears throat> Surfing USA, the list goes on. If you listen, if you actually listen to the lyrics, a lot of times they give you a story. And because the story is so, because it is a story, it's so easy to be able to remember, especially when you go back into the chorus. That is why, because the lyrics were so easy to do, that Queen was able to come up with a song like We Will Rock You. You came up with a good beat, which was an interactive song, and then the lyrics to go through it, I would guarantee, I would get, I can almost promise you that people would not know what the main lyrics are, but they would all know what the chorus is. That's, again, it's a trigger. And the other one is, like, it's humorous. It's so funny, it's stupid. So, I mean, like Surfing Bird, how about everybody's heard about a bird, 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 bird. And it says bird about a hundred times. Okay. That's how uh, Island Boys got so popular. That's all they did. Where Island Boys were just trying to make it. Uh, again, we had... Uh, Baja man. And who let the dogs out? Who, who, who? Who let the dogs out? And it was just a silly, stupid song that everybody would have some fun with, that everybody would make fun of. And it's short lived, but it's popular. It will not, it probably won't be legendary, but who knows? It may be leg legendary later on. So. I had to put my notes away before they flew away. So that, that's basically my video for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I feel I'm missing some more stuff, so I'm just going to keep this here so I can be able to, uh, you know, come back to it and uh, revisit it and make a much better video on this. Because I still got, there's a lot, a few more things that I wanted to say on this. But it's up here for now. And if you enjoyed the video, please, uh, Give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, and if you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Till next time, keep on rocking.